And I feel like everyone has a place that they feel um, most comfortable, um, most at home in. Um, mine happens to be the desert. Kim's passion reminded me of another desert advocate, one from the history books, Minerva Hamilton Hoyt. A wealthy socialite from South Pasadena, Hoyt fell in love with California's native desert flora and curated a series of garden exhibits to share her passion. Unfortunately, her passion became a little too infectious. Hoyt sparked a craze that had Angelinos driving into the desert to dig up the closest cactus they could find. Hoyt soon realized the precious plants needed federal protection or else they'd be loved to death. She recruited powerful allies and launched a crusade to create a national park in the Southern California desert. But in 1933, the incoming Roosevelt administration was ambivalent about protecting this sun-baked land. So Hoyt traveled to Washington, D.C. to sell the idea in person, and she brought with her a pitch deck, a photo album with images that highlighted the stark beauty of the area. I wanted to see the album for myself and learn more about this passionate proponent. So I met up with retired park ranger and historian Joe Zarkey at the Joshua Tree National Park Archives. Here, you open that up. And here's the actual album. So we're going to open it and take a look at some of the photos. Photographs taken in the prospective Minerva Hoyt monument. Right. So Minerva Hamilton Hoyt put this book together, this scrapbook together, right. and brought it out to Washington. Yes. So Minerva sat down with Secretary Ickes right. and was basically showing him, trying to make the case for, for creating this national monument. You, yes. And you know, you, you would have liked to have been a fly on the wall when the discussion was going on. Yeah. She probably was meeting with Park Service officials too at, at the same time. Right. Um, so this was essentially her pitch deck. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And these are old style Ansel Adams landscapes, black and white. Yeah, these are beautiful photos. They are. Yeah. Uh, some of them show not only the area of, uh, that became Joshua National Monument, there are some photographs in here that show some of the other sites that were being looked at sure. also. Because she, she proposed a much larger park than what was uh, exactly. eventually enacted. Yeah, and uh, her first big success came around 1933 uh, when she got Ickes and Roosevelt to sign a presidential proclamation that withdrew 1.1 million acres out of the public domain so you couldn't mm. file mining claims or anything in it anymore mm. while it was being studied for potential mm. preservation as a park. Bear in mind, that I think one of the really interesting things here is she's a woman doing this, you know, mm. at a time when you know, we weren't seeing a lot of uh, women leading campaigns like this, you know, and mm. so forth, and especially she was not only a woman conservationist, she was a first woman desert conservationist of any significance. Mm. And so she was, you know, mostly dealing with men. Sure. You know, uh, very powerful men. Very powerful men, yeah. and trying to convince them that she was a serious person and that they should listen to what she wanted to do. Right. You know. So these were some of the, you know, the landscape images that she was showing. So we have Josh Trees, but we also have the boulder formations now that you see. I love these captions too. Many interesting groups of rocks such as these makes the inspiration point country a geologist paradise. Right. Yeah. She saw that the, the, the visual elements of the desert, the openness of the desert, just, just its expansiveness and everything was inspiring to her and she thought it would be to others. And that as uh, California grew, that recreational opportunities for its, its growing population in open landscapes like Josh Tree were, were going to be essential. These photographs, and Minerva Hoyt's tireless activism, sold FDR on the idea of desert preservation, 